Adam, does this goat skin make me look big? Looks better on you than the previous owner. What? I'm having a hard time losing these last few pounds since bearing your children, and that's the best you can do? I look better than a goat? Thanks. Babe, you know you are the most beautiful woman on the planet. Mm. What? I'm the only woman on the planet. Well, I can't help that. You know, and it's amazing that as the only woman on the planet, you still can't seem to remember my birthday or give me flowers once in a while. Well, I did give you a rib. Oh, right. I forgot about that since you haven't mentioned it for an hour. It's like your free pass to never lift a finger for me again. Never lift a finger? I am out there busting my rear all day. Food just doesn't pop up from the ground. I have to get it with the sweat of my brow. Since someone went and got the ground cursed. You think farming's hard? Try raising those kids. Try giving birth. Well, if someone wouldn't have taken advice from a talking reptile. Oh, here we go. Are you talking to me, you little snake? What? Oh, jump off a bridge? Oh, I would, but they haven't been invented yet. Oh, eat this fruit? Well, you look like a pretty trustworthy snake. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, well, we were until you went and pretty much ruined it for all of mankind, so good job with that. I seem to remember you taking a bite, too. Well, I thought I was eating from the tree of the knowledge of restfulness and serenity. Right. It's never your fault. Besides, what was I going to do with a fallen wife? That would just be weird. Oh, you fell for me? You're an idiot. Idiot? I named every single animal. Right. Great job with that. A, a prairie dog's not a dog, a seahorse isn't a horse, and a bald eagle isn't bald. Well, I was going pretty fast. Aardvark? Platypus? Okay, they were at the back of the line. Not everything can be cat or rat or bat. Hippopotamus? Yeah, well, woman was taken. Okay, how many gorge do you have back there? That was a joke. Not good for men to be alone. <laughs> no, it's great. going to be an awesome day because we are going to have a lot of fun as you saw in the intro marriage can be a lot of fun or it can be a lot of sarcasm if you get into arguments as the very first one it starts getting nasty really 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 fast and I want you to know if you're in here today and you're like oh man this is a service on marriage like I'm not married I'm a kid or I'm a single person I want you to know you are in the best place today because you have an opportunity to hear what a real awesome marriage is, what an unimaginable marriage is all about. And you have an opportunity to have that before you even um, experience it, where some of us are going to have to go back and do some cleanup work, maybe. We're going to just kind of, um, you know, we're going to keep it casual and fun, but very informative. And we're going to share a, real, a lot of great information with you guys. So uh, if you have uh, some paper and a pen, you really, really want to take some notes. Uh, I would even go further to say, you know, after this service, once we upload it to YouTube this week, make sure and go to the YouTube channel, Mountain Movers Church channel, and take notes. Okay, because we've, we, this is going to be so chucked full of so much great information, and your marriage is worth it. So, and for the, and like Misty said, just to kind of you know dovetail into what she was saying, if you're single today, listen, don't tune this out, all right? Because if you plan on being married, this is going to prepare you and help you to really be the person that God wants you to be. If you have been divorced, all right, and you're wanting to try this again, go second round or third for maybe some of you, maybe it's a fourth round then you know what? You need this, all right? So don't tune this out. We've got a lot of great information. So I want to start out just this morning by kind of helping paint this picture. And it's so true when you think about it. For a lot of us, you know, when we get married, we begin with this, what I call like a white picket fence dream of what our marriage is going to be right? We have these lofty, you know, these, these really high aiming expectations of how awesome and unbelievable, almost kind of floating on the clouds kind of marriage, how it's going to be perfect. And, and in that dream, when you dream, dream the great dream of having this unbelievable marriage, the house was spotless clean. And the kids were playing in the yard as deer came frolicking by and all the bills were paid and work is pleasant and, and it's, it's a lie 
straight from hell because that's not life and that's not reality. We get so we get so deceived, right? We've been lied to, we've been duped by ourselves into thinking that a great marriage is just going to happen. And let me be the first to tell you today that great marriages do not just happen. They don't just happen. And this morning we want to talk about what it really means to have an unimaginable marriage. What does that mean? A marriage that is beyond what you could have ever imagined or conceived. Now some of you might be thinking, but you just said it's a lie. I'm telling you, God is my witness. It is totally and completely possible for you to have an unimaginable marriage beyond what you can imagine or even conceive in your mind. Let's see what the Word has to say about God's business of doing the unimaginable. Check this out in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, one of my favorite scriptures. I say that every week. I love God's Word. It's, I'm out of, it's out of control. All right. Now, all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. I want to read that again. What a great message. What a great passage of Scripture for us. Now, all glory to God. This is who He is. This is what He can do. He is able through His mighty power at work within whom? Us. To accomplish infinitely, that means never ending, <laughs> more than we might ask or think. You know what that is? That's unimaginable. Now, how many times, be honest with yourself this morning, for those of you who are familiar with the scripture, you've read the scripture before, how many times when you read this passage, did you actually think that this could be applicable to your marriage? But I want to tell you this morning that it can be applied. In fact, I'm going to add to God's Word this morning, even though the Word of God says do not do that. I'm not doing that in a way that would be displeasing to Him. I'm doing it for the sake of us being able to really capture God's idea and His plan for our marriage. Check out this scripture when you read it from uh, Brad's marriage version of Ephesians 3 and 20. It, said, it would read something like this, Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think regarding our marriage. Amen? He is able to do the unimaginable in your marriage if you will only let him. So don't forget it. So God's, God wants that to happen in your life. Why? Why do you think he wants that to happen in your marriage or in your marriage to be? Why do you think God would want that for you? When a man loves a woman, that sounds like Michael Bolton. I'm about to bust it. I am... I'm a, if I only had the mullet, man, it'd be awesome. I think we need to bring it. Let's take a vote. Who thinks we ought to bring the mullets back? You go to some of the schools, you will already see it. There's a few kids it's trying back. it. My son asked, and I said, hey, we're not doing how the How many mullet. of you guys think Pastor Brad ought to grow a mullet? Not happening. No, not a good idea. I'm bald right here on top. <laughs> mullet in the back, not cool. So God wants this to happen because when a man loves his wife like Christ loves the church and the wife honors her husband and follows his vision for the home, marriage becomes a highly effective marketing tool for God to reveal his existence to humanity. You want to know who God is and how real God is? Look at a marriage that is absolutely full of the presence of God, completely, undeniably unimaginable. Look at that marriage, and there's no doubt that God is real because He's living and breathing in that relationship. So yes, God wants your marriage to be unimaginable so that He can work through you so the world can see who He is in you. Does that make sense? God wants to do it in your marriage. The question is, are you going to let him? But again, as I said, unbelievable, unimaginable marriages don't just happen. Just like an unimaginable house isn't just built. It doesn't just happen. It's built. And an unimaginable marriage is a marriage that is built. It takes teamwork. It takes hard work. It takes planning, intentionality, and vision. I want to say that last part again. If you're taking notes, this is very important. An unimaginable marriage takes planning, intentionality, and it takes vision. Before we get too much deeper into this message, I want to tell you, with great fulfillment, 
You know, a lot of times when, when a pastor brings a word to, to his people, a lot of times I'm preaching to myself. When I'm the most passionate, when I'm the most excited, when I'm really in it, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. Especially when it comes to, to living for God and being holy and being set apart. I'm preaching to myself. And this morning, I want to tell you that, that we can truly say we have an unimaginable marriage. I'm telling you, God is flowing through our lives each and every day. I, I, I've, I, I tell her this all the time. I never could have imagined being more in love with this woman than I am. Hands down. That's actually how we came up with today's message title. <laughs> exactly. Because one day Brad was saying, and he just said, you know, it's amazing. He said, I never imagined when I dreamed about what my life would be like, I never imagined I would have a marriage like we have. And um, you may not know, but today every church in Delaware County is preaching on marriage. So if you'd have gone to any church today in our entire county, every church is preaching on marriage because today the enemy is out to destroy the church and he wants to do it through the marriages. Because if a marriage falls apart, a family falls apart. If marriages and families fall apart, the church falls apart apart. The enemy is out to destroy the church and he's doing it through the marriages. And so as as that was kind of flowed down to us that the county's going to do it together, we were talking about this and we said, "You know what? People when we when we get married and we have this image in our head of how this awesome life we have ahead, we base it all on one thing and that is just love. Just fall in love with somebody. Just find somebody to love and life will just be perfect." And that is the biggest crock of whatever you want to call there is okay because here's why Amen. you can fall in love with anybody <laughs> anybody that treats you good right you can be attracted to almost anybody you can fall in love with almost anybody but yeah. it is a choice to stay in love Okay, the day you say I do, you can spend 10 grand on a beautiful wedding and within a few months, you're in divorce court. Why? Because you allowed yourself to once you said I do, stop choosing to love because love is a choice. If we can get it up on the screen. Can you imagine building a house with no plans? How many of you guys are carpenters? Have you ever helped, you've ever helped to maybe build a house? Raise your hand this morning. I'm raising my hand. Not to say that I am any good at it, but I have helped to build a house. So can you imagine building a house like this without any plans? You wouldn't do it, would you? Why would you even attempt to even begin the dirt work without knowing how big the building is or what the dimensions are, what the square footage? Why would you do that without any plans? You wouldn't know what to do. You wouldn't know where to begin. In the same respect, each and every day, many of us do that in our marriage. We try building this marriage to be this big, beautiful thing with no plans. And so this morning, we want to give you a plan that will guide you in, towards achieving this unimaginable marriage. So we're going to give you the plan, but and the plan will work. I want to tell you right now, everything we're about to tell you, it absolutely will work. We are living testimony that it works. The question is, will you work the plan? That's the question. It really comes down to you this morning. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful for your word and for your wisdom. I pray that you would impart it to us today. Help us not to just be hearers of your word, but doers. Help us to apply it to our lives, that we would be different than the way we came in. God, put a seed inside of us to pursue your dreams and your vision for our lives and especially for our marriages. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. So I'm going to quickly, men, I'm going to speak to you for a little bit, okay? And I want you to, if you can take notes, take notes. If you don't have any notes to take, then really pay attention because this stuff that I'm going to share with you is really awesome and it will change your marriage. Undeniably, it will. It has worked for me and it will work for you. I'm going to go through these kind of quickly and if you want to jump in, we can just do it that way. But um, there's about 12 things that I want to run by you real quick. The first thing is that a real man of God in an unimaginable marriage is going to reject passivity. All right? You have to have the attitude and the mindset that failure is not an option. And if you will convince yourself that failure is absolutely not an option, 
and you live a life and, and, and you maintain the mentality of saying, I will reject passivity. I will not sit idly by and, and, and settle for less than God's best, then God will bless your marriage. The example I like to use is Adam and Eve. And if you want to get some of this stuff, I want to tell you like another message that you could go to would be the missing link. We did it earlier this year and it's for men. How to become an authentic man of God. If you've not heard or seen that message, you need to check it out. All right, the missing link. Go check that out. A lot of the stuff I'm going to share is from that. So we see Adam in the garden, right? And then all of a sudden he's talking to a serpent. Who the heck talks to a serpent, right? Well, what, what's he doing talking to a snake, all right? Because a real man isn't going to stand around and have a conversation with a snake. I'm going to be looking for the garden hoe because I'm going to kill the sucker, right? Real men of God, they, they, they reject passivity. They're not going to just stand idly by and watch their marriage crumble. They're going to do something proactively to make sure that this marriage becomes unimaginable. They are going to take the reins and be the boss and they're going to do their part and they're not going to settle for less than God's best. Number one. Number two, real men of God, they accept responsibility. And I'm going to read this part because I want you to get this. God gave it to me last night. It's awesome. Check it out. If you aren't a well full of God's presence, your wife will have nothing to draw from. If you are not a well, men, full of God's presence, your wife will have nothing to draw from. Yeah, your toes are going to hurt in just a minute. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you good. So pull those toes back because I love you because I want you guys to have the kind of marriage that I know God wants you to have. You've got to accept responsibility. Be the man of God that she needs you to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? Men, you need to pray for and over your wives. You need to protect her physically. We normally got that part down. Oh, I'm going to whip somebody. Yeah, I try to break into my house. Watch what happens. We've got that part down. That's easy because we got the testosterone flowing through the body, right? That's easy because we think in our culture that's what a real man is. And yeah, but that's that much of your responsibility. Protect her, yes, but also provide for her and be her pastor. That is our responsibility. Accept your responsibility. Be the man she needs you to be. Lead courageously. You know the rise and fall of any organization, church, school, government, uh, business, anything that's going to be anything if they want to be successful at it, it's got to have great leadership. There's no such thing as a bad team, only a bad coach. Right? Right? There was this NFL player, and he retired and went into sales. It's a true story. And he was sitting around this conference table Monday morning, first day on the job. And, the, and, and they were going over sales for the previous week, and they said, hey, guys, sales are down. And, and at the end of the pitch, if you will, at the end of the pep talk, the leader basically said, we basically need a better team, wouldn't you think? And he turned to the NFL player and he said, hey, seriously, wouldn't you think that if you guys were losing consistently, wouldn't you think you need to maybe make some adjustments and get a better team? And he said, confused, he said, no, actually we would get a new coach. Leadership. And do you know the rise and fall of your marriage men is on your leadership? Do you know that if I had one person to choose from in a marriage counseling session, I would pick the man because he could pretty much fix it all. Man, that hurts. Doggone it. That hurts. But you know why? It's all based on the leadership of a man, which is what God, that's how God designed it. He designed us to lead. And Adam let Eve down, and that's why we're in the mess that we're in right now. All of humanity is cursed. Adam, good job with that, right? Good job. Thank you. AJ was helping me take out the trash not too long ago, and he had to work. He said, Dad, why do we got to work? I'm sitting here sweating. I'm like, well, the Bible says that we shall work by the sweat of our brow, son. You can thank Adam for that. And he said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to go up to Adam right in the judging line. I'm going to punch him right in the face. True story. True story. Lead courageously. Now, the following thing I'm going to tell you is very, very simple, but please do not miss this because it's very profound. Don't let the obvious confuse you into missing the magnitude of what this means. Are you ready? It's huge. Love her. Love her. Do you ever get up 
in the morning and say to yourself, I don't really feel like going to work. Raise your hand. That's ever you don't feel like going to work, right? Thank you for those of you who are honest. Thank you for the rest of you liars. <laughs> I will meet you right here at the end. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love you. You're a liar, but I love you. Um, there are times when we seriously do not feel like going to work, right? But do you go anyway? Why? Most of, some of you call in, you bunch of losers. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm being really negative today. I'm hating on our people. I'm so sorry. Some of you do call in, I know. <laughs> Somebody just raised their hand. <laughs> you shouldn't call in. But we go to work anyway. Why? Because we don't want to lose our job, right? And why do we have to be at work? Because we have a responsibility to be at work and to do a job. They're expecting us to do our job. And I would say the same thing to husbands. You can't wake up in the morning and decide one morning you're just not going to be a husband. Do your job. Love her. You don't have a choice. Your job, when you stood before the altar and you made that covenant commitment with God and you promised God and you promised her that you were going to love her and until death do you part, I want to tell you, you made a promise to do a job and your job is to love her. It's not conditional. It's not based on, well, you know, she, 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 she's disrespectful. She doesn't, she doesn't care how, how, how hard I work. She doesn't care how hard I try to be my very best and she never is thankful for anything I do. I, you know what? Get over it, dude. You know why? Because your responsibility is to love her. Plain and simple, period. Your job is to love her. That's your job. It's not conditional. It's a choice. Love is a choice. It's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It's not floating on the, I'm in love. Oh, yeah. Right? No. Anybody can fall in lust. Right? Anybody can do that. How many of you guys were in high school? Oh, my word. Right? Anybody can do that. He's so cute. Oh, my word. He's the quarterback. Can you believe it? Oh, my word. And you go on. And, oh, the, you make me sick. Seriously. <laughs> Love is so much more and so much more wonderful than just falling in lust. You can fall in love with anybody, but love, real love, it's a choice. It's a decision that you make and it's unconditional and you do it not because you feel like doing it, not because you want to do it. You do it because it's your responsibility as an authentic man of God to love that woman unconditionally no matter what. Love her. That's your job. Just do it. Just make a decision. I, when, when, when this hit me like a load of bricks in our marriage, I'm telling you guys, it changed everything for me, which in turn changed everything for our marriage. When I figured this out, it, it's not an option. It's just what I, it's my responsibility. It's what I do. Then I started seeing her through a different lens. I started seeing her through a completely different lens, which leads me to my, next, to my next part. Never lose the hunger to have an unimaginable marriage. Never lose the hunger. My parents got divorced when I was 12 years old. And I always thought to myself, you know, if, if they just... I remember thinking this as a child. You know, there, there was a time, there had to have been a time when they were so in love that they couldn't help but just to get married because they were so in love. What was it? What was going through their mind? What was so wonderful about what they had that caused them to want to make that commitment to spend the rest of their lives together? Couldn't that, couldn't that have been enough to fuel them to never lose the hunger to keep on moving forward? If we would just focus on why we got married in the first place, wouldn't that sustain us? Never lose the hunger in your marriage. What do you want to say about that? I'm not going to say very much because we've got a... Yeah, you better move on. Okay. Because I've got so, a... We're not going to make it all the way I'm going to go through these. We're running out of time. We've got so much to share with you guys. Have a vision for your marriage. All right? Have a dream for your marriage. In Mark 5 and 40, Jesus was talking to the, uh, to, to the disciples and to people around him, and they said, she's dead. She's gone. And he said, she's only sleeping. And they told her to get up. You see, Jesus saw her not as she was, but as she was going to be. And as men, we are called to have a vision for our marriage and not see our marriage as it is, but see it as it can be and see it as God sees it. 
some people just snap out of this daze of life and they say, I'm just not in love anymore. I just don't feel anything, right? But you are called as a man of God to have a vision for your marriage and, and not to see it as it is, but as it can be. Be selfless, right? In a nutshell, guys, your marriage is not about you at all. Get yourself out of the picture. Your life is over. You had a chance when you were single. It's done. Now you're married. Now it's all about her. I'm telling you right now, your life is all about her. Be romantic. Open doors, right? Clean the house. Do the dishes. Fold the laundry. That's right. I'm getting some dirty looks. I'm telling you right now, the most romantic thing you can do is clean the house. I'm telling you right now. Try it. Try it. Try it. This week, this week, try it clean the house and watch what happens I'm just I'm, I'm just saying it works it works be romantic but be spontaneous text her from time to time hey did you know I'm thinking about you right now oh and by the way I'm in love with you madly in love with you how often do I do that I'm telling you it works like melted wax in the hands brothers right there I'm telling you right now right now spontaneous love her be romantic be creative all right, if you have not a creative bone in your body, Google. That's what it's for. Go to Google and how to be romantic. If that's what you need to do, do it. How to be romantic and get you a list and start working on it. Continuing education. Absolutely. Continue education. Absolutely. You know, we encourage you every year, go to a marriage conference. There are conferences at, as, as a part of this church. We will have one at least this once or February. twice a year that we will encourage you to go to. And it's just an opportunity to get away from the craziness of your home and the, the rat race of life and go spend time focusing on your marriage. We've done that almost since the beginning. There were a few years where we were dirt poor and we didn't think we could afford it. And then we realized dirt poor, it didn't matter. Like scrape up the money and go to a conference. It makes if, the biggest If you difference. find yourself saying, I can't afford to go to marriage retreat, I would tell you, you can't afford not to. Your marriage is worth it sell the lawnmower, buy a new one next summer, buys you some time, right? Do whatever you need to do. Get to the marriage conference. This fe How many of you guys went with us to Romance Uncensored? Now we've got two services now, but so it'll be cut in half. But how many of you guys, raise your hands. If you went to Romance Uncensored, come on, raise high and proud. Thank you. All right, very good. So that's about half of us. We had like 20, huh? Couples, yes. A bunch of people it was awesome and and it was a great time so make plans now for this february to go to romance uncensored it will probably be at big cedar lodge awesome time it will blow your mind you're going to love it so continue your education men i know you, most of you uh we don't know how to read so but let's read a book read a book on marriage it's out there and i'm telling i'm being so negative today what is my problem i am not normally this negative i'm sorry i'm picking on you guys i man i love you i love you I need to move on. You, you, let's go to the next point. My goodness, I'm negative. Get around greatness. We did a whole message on this, and I'm telling you it's the truth. Find somebody whose marriage you just really look up to. For us, it's Joe and Tina Skiles. Has been for a long time. Great friends of ours. They have an unimaginable marriage. They love each other so much, and they inspire us. And we try to put ourselves around other couples who have that kind of marriage, and, and it's contagious. It drips off, and you learn things, and you, you catch things, right, about how to have that marriage. And then constantly, it's the, um, oh, no, no, 11 is date her, right? If you're not dating your spouse, you've lost your mind because it's the best thing ever. It keeps you young, and it keeps you excited about your relationship, and it's very proactive, and it's very intentional. You've got to date your spouse. We do that regularly, and then 12 is consistently reevaluate and upgrade your strategies. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail, all right? So don't plan to fail in your marriage. Make a plan for your marriage to be unimaginable. That's right. All right, ladies, it's your turn. You know what? The Bible makes it really clear the roles in marriage. In Ephesians 5, and I'm not going to take the time to read the whole thing, but in Ephesians 5, verses 21 through 25, you can kind of just glance at the screen, and I'm going to just pick out a couple points, and it says this, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That is talking to all people. Submit, that word in that passage means respect. So the first thing in this passage he says is respect all people out of reverence, for Christ himself. Then it goes on to the wives and it says, wives, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. That right there, when you break it all down, and I don't have time to break it all down for you this morning, but that means respect. There are two things that husbands and wife need. Wives need to be loved. And if you go on in this passage, it says that the husband is to love the wife as Christ loved the church. Does anybody know what Christ did for the church? Yes. 
at least our children know, he died. He died. He gave it all for the church. And that is how God has called husbands to love the wife. So it is inside of women to want to be loved. But the thing about men, the husband, God has wired them to be the head of the home. And the greatest desire they have is for respect. If you ever sit down and counsel and you ever hear the inside of a marriage, what you'll begin to understand is that there's a lack of love and a lack of respect. And when you lose love and respect, you begin to just crumble in a marriage. And it's a great thing as kids and and as a single person begin to operate in that, to say, I'm going to learn to respect all people because that's the number one thing I'm going to need to do in my marriage. I'm going to learn to love unconditionally because that's what true love is. You see, oftentimes we put conditions on love. If you treat me this way, I'll love you. If you respect me, how many has ever heard this? Okay, don't raise your hand because it might be you. If you respect me, I'll respect you. Well, stop being a nag. Well, no, da, 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 da. and it just goes on and on. And a lot of times you guys may think in your mind that we have had a perfect marriage because we say we have an unimaginable marriage. No, we've nearly been divorced more than once in our life. But here's the difference. You want to know what my daughter's like, what? That was before you, baby. My twin daughters turn 11 my girls today, they turned 11, 11 years ago today at seven o'clock, I gave birth to our twin daughters and our life with them has been wonderful. But before that, we had a lot of problems and it always came down to the I syndrome. Do you know what the I syndrome is? I want this and I want that. And if you don't give me what I want, then I'm walking out that door. I, 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 I. What we failed to realize is that when we, when we got married and we put rings on our fingers, the I went out the door. It was no longer I, but it's we. The two of us together will make decisions. The two of us together will have to make decisions that sometimes I don't want to do what he's asking me to do, but because we made a covenant to one another and we made a covenant to serve the other that I'm going to do what I don't want to do. Well, that's not right. I shouldn't have to. No, you shouldn't have to. You should want to. That's the difference. I want to read you a couple quotes that are so good. If happiness is our primary goal, we'll get divorced as soon as happiness seems to wane. You see, true happiness has nothing to do with this relationship. True happiness has everything to do with your relationship with Jesus Christ. It's who's on the inside of you. That's the only way that you will ever have an unimaginable marriage is if Jesus Christ is the very center. We can give you all the practical advice all day long. You got to have communication. You sure do. But if Jesus isn't right in the middle of your marriage, then you are going to have a lot of of struggles. Is it impossible? No. If you're married to somebody who's not a believer, you keep praying for that person because that's the only hope you have. The only reason today that we have an unimaginable marriage is even when we didn't want to, we would pray together. Have you ever tried to take the hand of somebody that you were ticked off at and pray? Well, let's just pray. I'm not going to pray with you. And then what do you do? Up goes a wall. You let that wall stay up. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. You know why? Because we start putting these walls in between You just us. said something really good. I'm, everybody's experienced that feeling of just, <sighs> you get mad Don't touch and you me. put the wall up. That right there is the closest you'll get to Satan himself. That feeling that you feel in that very moment is literally the demonic realm closing in on you to try to build up walls in your marriage so that they can, he can tear your marriage down. When you find yourself soling up like that, she just said it. Don't let the sun go down upon your anger. Men, I know I keep pointing at you because it's our responsibility. No matter how you feel, you grab, you've been fighting all day. I don't care. You grab her hand and you man up and you do what's right and you pray. And you don't do it out of sarcasm. You do it out of sincerity and watch what God does. The wall comes down. I'm going to give you just some practical as we're running out of time. I'm going to give you some practical things that wives, we have to work on. One of the number one thing that wives will struggle with is their mouth. 
okay? Because God has created us to be very vocal, very verbal, more emotional than the man. That's why there's a reason God created the man to be the head, okay? They're less emotional for a reason. There were the warriors in the Old Testament. You go all through the Old Testament, man, they're the ones out there slaying people left and right. If it was women, we'd be like, oh my goodness, I can't kill you, you know? And then off our head would go, right? That's why God created men that to be the head. That was a great illustration. <laughs> I thought about it, right? Me and Brady would be like with our swords. No. I'm so sorry. Take my life. I'm not killing you, right? I can't do it. I'm so sorry. I Let's both can't. run at the same time. <laughs> Opposite directions. Truce. God made men to be the warriors to lead the home. But here's some yeah. really practical advice. Focus on your spouse's strength, not their weaknesses. We are really good, women, and it can go both ways, but we're really good. good at being able to just just point it out. You know, just kind of, we, we're able in our minds to just think about everything from the inception of time and from the inception of meeting one another. And we have this memory bank that's unbelievable. It's like we got this file of everything you ever did that was wrong. And the moment you tick me off, I'm going to go back through that file and I'm going to remind you of all those things. If you do that, and it's funny, you'll start building up those walls one at a time. Because as you remind your husband of all the things he is not good at, all the things that he's done wrong, the respect will respect totally crumble. Dwindles. And when that begins to happen, you have problems. The next thing is encourage rather than criticize. You know, I'll just be really transparent. Some of us do not have the personality and we are not natural born encouragers. I am not. When I married Brad, he is the most the biggest encourager, and you guys know that if you guys are around him very much, Brad always encourages to the Except point. Except for today, I'm being super negative <laughs> to all these guys. Except yeah. for to the point of people being like, are you just saying that stuff? No, he's really real. But I had to learn to be more encouraging because what would begin to happen is I was good at pointing out his flaws. And if he messed up, I was really good at helping him to understand where he needed to tweak some things and get better. But when he did right, I failed to be like, thank you so much for doing up those dishes. Thank you so much for whatever it is you do. Because, you know, all of our life is made up of just little tiny things that mean so much. The next thing is pray for your spouse instead of talking about them to all your friends. If you want your marriage to work, if you need to talk to somebody, then you'll find a godly person who will keep it between you and them, and that's it. You don't run to mama. You don't run to your sisters. You don't run to your girlfriends. He is That's such good. a jerk. I That's cannot good. believe what he just did. Blah, 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 blah. That is danger zone. Right. You do not do it. Next thing is be a good listener. Stop talking and let your spouse talk and really, really listen. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Oftentimes in a marriage, what we do is when we finally do have a conversation, we begin to say, that's not true. I'm not like that. Well, if somebody's saying it, as hard as it is to hear, the Bible says it's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. And so you have to let your walls down, really begin to listen to what your spouse is saying, and then be willing to change. Yeah, if it stings a little bit, it's probably true. It probably is. The next thing is communicate your frustrations. You have to be willing to say what frustrates you, but you have to choose the right moment. And this is the number one thing. If, you, if you're struggling in your marriage, you don't, it's not in the heat of a battle that you begin to then spew out all the things you're frustrated about. That's the worst time ever. It's when everything is going good that you say, hey, can we talk about a couple things? You know, yesterday when you snapped at me, that really hurt me. And in that moment, do you know what will happen? The other person will probably say, oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought about that. And I, man, I shouldn't have spoke to you like that. But if you do it in the heat of the moment when you're already angry and you say, you know, when you said that, you, you really hurt me. It's like, I don't care if I hurt you or not. I meant to hurt you. Push the buttons. Because once you've been with somebody very long, you know the buttons to push to send them to the moon and back within moments. And the last thing is this. Be willing to forgive. Be willing to forgive and say, I'm sorry, and genuinely try to change. You can't keep dragging up somebody's past. Once you have already discussed it and you've said, I'm sorry, and I forgive you, you cannot go back and dig it up again. Leave it there. So often in marriages, when a battle begins to happen, we go back and we pull from that file. Well, remember, you did it again. I knew you'd never change. 
Well, that's because you already had it played out in your mind that you were not going to allow them to have the benefit of the doubt. Encourage them to get better. That's good. So what we want to do now is, you know, if, if, if your relationship with Christ isn't solid, your marriage can never be unimaginable, whether you're the husband or the wife. Maybe you'd say to yourself this morning, you know, everything you're saying sounds awesome, but I'm so far from being able to do what you're saying. My first step is just to come to salvation. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that right now. And when we're done, what I'm going to do is we're going to lead those of you couples uh, that are in this place. We're going to give an opportunity for you to just where, right where you sit. If you choose to participate, we're going to allow you to renew your vows in just a moment. We're going to renew that covenant with God this morning based on the things that we've discussed. So if you would please um, bow your heads with me. And I just want to find out this morning who I'm talking to. If you would just close your eyes. And, and this morning, I just want to know if that's you this morning and you, you would say, Pastor Brad, I don't, I don't even have a relationship with God. I don't know that my eternity is secure and I want to do that right now. Here's what it's going to take. Admitting that you have fallen short of God's standard. Asking Him to forgive you. Believing that Jesus is who He says He is. Confess with your mouth that He is Lord. And dedicate that you're going to live for Him according to His Word. Now if you want to do that this morning, I would love to pray with you right where you are. I'm going to count to three, and when I do, if, if that's you this morning, I just want you to raise your hand and be honest with me and be honest with God so I can pray with you this morning, and then we're going to pray as a family. So here we go. One, two, three. Anyone in God's house this morning? Amen. Amen. I see your hand. I see your hand. Amen. Amen. Then having committed to that, I want to pray with you this morning. If we can just all pray as a family together, just repeat these words after me. Father, I love you. I thank you for Jesus. Forgive me now of my shortcomings. Wipe my slate clean. I believe with all my heart that Jesus is Lord. I confess him as Lord. And I dedicate my life right here and now to never be the same again. Help me to live according to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for those of you in this place, couples in this house, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. We're just going to give you the opportunity right now. If you want to renew your vows, and maybe you're not with your spouse this morning. That's okay too. Just say your part and mean it and own it and go with it. But if you would, just grab your spouse by the hand right now. If you guys are in, just grab her by the hand, men. And then I want you to just repeat this after me if you would. We're going to make this commitment to God. We're just going to renew the covenant that we made with God. For some of you, maybe it's not been very long. For some, it's been a lot longer. But this is just going to refresh our mind to remember why we did what we did and to ask God to keep us strong and keep us committed. So repeat these words after me. I take you again to be my wife, loving you now and as you grow. And develop into all that God intends. I will love you when we are together and when we are apart. When our lives are at peace and when they are in turmoil. When I am proud of you and when I am disappointed in you. In times of rest and in times of work. I will honor your goals and dreams and help you to fulfill them from the depth of my being I will seek to be open and honest with you always and for the wives I take you again to be my husband loving you now as you grow and develop into all that God intends I will love you when we are together and when we are apart 
when our lives are at peace and when our lives are in turmoil, when I am proud of you and when I am disappointed in you, in times of rest and in times of work, I will honor your goals and your dreams and help you to fulfill them. From the depth of my being, I will seek to be open and honest with you always. If you would bow your head with me, we're going to pray over all of our marriages and families. Father God, we are so thankful today. God, that you are the inventor, the creator of the marriage. God, it is between you and a couple that a covenant is made. And I pray today, Father God, that you would renew those marriages that are struggling today. God, I pray that you would give them a new passion and a new vigor, God. Lord, to stand before you and to make you proud. God, that their marriage, God, would be set on fire from above. God, that you would be the center of their marriage. God, I pray for those marriages, God, that are, that are doing well. God, I pray that they would have a desire to increase their love for one another. God, to come together even more, God, to show the world who you are through our life as a married couple. God, I thank you, Father God. Lord, what God has brought together, let no man put asunder, Lord. Bind our marriages together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.